Hi, this is Mike Smith, and it's uh, my pleasure to be able to talk to you again today uh, by means of this video about the roots of Western civilization, and especially as they pertain to ideas of liberty and freedom, things that we often don't differentiate between, and yet there is a great deal of, of uh, discussion that needs to be had about the differences. One of my favorite authors in a book that I hold very closely is Gertrude Himmelfarb's book on the roads to modernity, in which she looks at the three different aspects of enlightenment from the French to the English to the American, and uh, that makes a clear distinction between the uh, definition of liberty and freedom by denoting that liberty is primarily a political and a legal concept, and freedom is more of a social or a psychological concept. She further states that the two terms, apart from uh, comparing the products of the two Enlightenments in England by saying that the English Enlightenment was tied to the public good, uh, but in America, liberty was the driving force behind uh, the, the American Enlightenment. And then she goes on to discuss the ramifications of that, which I think is quite a valid way of looking at those Enlightenments. Uh, this idea of liberty, which was so vital to uh, the new American political dis uh, order that we're studying, and uh, I'm particularly studying Thomas Jefferson and his thinking, always has these ties back to uh, ancient Western civilization and the rise from the Greeks, especially ideas about freedom and liberty that we want to discuss. Uh, you know, you realize that Thomas Jefferson's writing of the Declaration of Independence was a radical view of liberty. The idea that people had the rights that should be guaranteed uh, by law and that laws protect liberty and uh, the rights of man. And so when these laws fail and laws are uh, illegitimate, then people have a right to rebel and go their own way. Many of these thoughts came from as early uh, as the Greeks with Aristotle and others that are very important. One of the works that uh, I've looked at this week of great, with great interest was the writings of uh, Livy, who wrote the history of Rome and sought to remind the people of the essential nature of liberty or libertas, uh, a word that finds its roots in the Roman Latin language. Liber uh, Livy used as examples the speeches and the articles of noble Romans to point back uh, to the essential uh, virtues of the past that made Rome the wonderful empire that it became. Uh, freedom is much more a virtue, I guess, uh, in our considerations, because we, we talk about that in terms of uh, an act being unobstructed by others and being guaranteed. You have the freedom of religion, and that is that you can, uh, you can worship a, a God or not worship God according to the dictates of your heart. It's fascinating that our early founding fathers uh, explored things like the Muslims and what that would be like to have a Muslim become a citizen of the United States. In fact, Thomas Jefferson purchased a copy of the Quran, uh, to, uh, Quran in order to uh, study another religion. So I think that's quite interesting. Another freedom would be the freedom of speech that you could uh, say what you wanted to say and write what you wanted to write. And of course, that has constantly been under inspection and revision all through these years. And of course, it's just as much a, a valid point today to argue for the freedom of, of speech and the limits of that, uh, which was not probably considered very much in the early days. But even, the, even the, uh, in the uh, Assembly of Athens, which was the only true democracy in history, people had a right to speak their peace and then to vote their mind. And so these freedoms were, uh, you know, hashed out in the assembly in that day and have been held as a vital part of Western civilization all down through these years. One of those freedoms that's currently under review is the right to bear arms. And what are the limitations of that in a free society? So many of these things go back to those ancient roots and have just kind of spilled down through Western civilization where people have held, held on to them uh, and of course, during under periods of tyranny, uh, when kings and emperors and rulers would try to go the other direction, there's always that element of coming back to those founding elements. And then, of course, when we reach 1215 with King John and the Magna Carta as our uh, 
our, our, our lesson this week talks about the importance of what happened at Runnymede was a confirmation of those events that we find in the early, early days of Western civilization with the Greeks. Not all Greeks were like that, of course. Sparta would have been the opposite of that. It was a, a group that ruled out of fear, afraid of their slaves taking over and uh, taking them over. And so they basically became an armed camp. So you can see these issues and they kind of looked with a cross eye at uh, Athens as being kind of wimpy and, you know, thinking about all these great thoughts and things while they lived in fear and misery. The Athenians lived a much more peaceful life based upon ideas of freedom and liberty. So I hope in some sense this has kind of clarified our thinking today as we look back at some of these ancient works uh, and realize that this is very much what makes Western civilization important and may be the reason that Western civilization is often under fire uh, as being unfair or un, you know, prejudiced or whatever, because these principles are of such a nature that we need to uh, exhibit them and hold them up and uh, make them worthy of, of our uh, admiration and appreciation. Uh, and so I think that is helpful to our thinking. Thank you.